Okay, south dealer. North, south, not vulnerable. East, west are vulnerable. So, first of all, we have seven points. Completely balanced hand, 4 4 3 2. Not perfectly balanced, that would be 4 4, four 3 3 3. Um, but yeah, nothing to say here. No preemptive bid, not enough points to open. So, a simple pass to start. Now to west. West has got a similar hand to uh, to south. They've got eight nine points, same shape four four three two. Again, no preemptive bid. No, not enough points to open. Doesn't meet the rule of twenty, etc. So also a pass. Okay, round to north. Let's see if north's got an opening hand. And indeed they do. North has got fourteen points, so that's definitely enough to open the bidding. Uh, but unfortunately, north's got the dreaded four 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 one shape. And the reason this is a problem is because it's not balanced, you have a singleton, so you can't open no trumps, you can't treat it as a balanced hand. Um, but similarly, therefore if it's unbalanced, you would like a 5 card suit, because you want to bid you 5, then you 4, or you want to bid you 5 twice, i.e. you've got 6 cards in that suit. So the 4 4 4 one is a problem for basically all bidding systems, because you have an unbalanced hand, because of the singleton, but you don't have a 5 card suit. So ultimately, what you have to do um, is tell a lie. Now that's not perfect, I appreciate that, but these 4 4 4 one simply don't fit the system that we play. We either show 5-4 or we show balanced hand, and this is neither of those things. Um, it's a nightmare, to be honest. So what I advise with 4 4 4 one hands, um, almost any system you're playing, I would advise that you open one of a minor suit. And the reason for that is when you tell a lie, when you have to lie with a 4 4 4 one what you end up having to do is pretend you have five of the first suit you bid and then four of the second suit. So what you would have to do in this scenario is open one of a minor and then bid spades next, which would show a 5-4 or 5-4 hand, uh, which is a fib because you haven't got five in the original suit, but you are telling a lie about a minor suit, so it's less damaging. If you were to open one spade on this hand and your partner were to bid, say, two hearts, you have a problem because you can't, haven't got enough points to bid no trumps. You don't want to bid clubs or diamonds because then that would show 5-4 and you'd be lying about a major and that is much worse because your partner's likely to agree the major if they have a fit there. Um, if you were playing American standard American yellow card system, you can't open a spade anyway because that would promise five cards in a major, so you would have to open a minor. So that coincidentally suits what we would do in, in our call anyway. Um, the way I advise you open these 4 4 4 one hands is you open the minor one of these two, of opposite colour to your singleton. So your singleton is red, you open a club. If your singleton were black, you would open a diamond. Um, the reason for this is it facilitates your lie later. It makes your, your lie less damaging and easier later. So you open a club with red singletons and you open a diamond with black singletons when you're 4 4 4 one with enough points to open the bidding. So, boiling that all down, I would open this hand, because it's an opening hand, and I would open one club looking to show a 5 4 hand if necessary on the second round of bidding. So start with one club. Okay now to east, looking to potentially overcall one club. And that is in fact what they can do here. We've got uh, six, eight, ten points in total. Balanced hand, five, three, three, two. It's not a particularly good hand, not brilliant certainly, but it has got a five card suit and I would argue that five card suit is good quality, uh, which is the heart suit. Especially given that we're bidding hearts over clubs, we're bidding a major over a minor. It looks like the right thing to do here to, uh, to bid one heart, especially because we can bid one heart. If we were overcalling over one spade, we would have to bid two hearts. I would be a little bit more unsure about that because we're at the two level. At the one level, you can get in very cheap as an overcall, and it usually benefits your side to get involved, especially if your partner can support you and you can make the opener's rebid difficult. Um, so I would bid a simple overcall here of one heart. Okay, back to south. South now responding to North's opening bid of one club. Um, firstly, ignoring the one heart overcall. Obviously, that does change things, but ignoring the one heart overcall for a second, we would have been responding with this hand. We would be responding at the one level because we've got six or more points. And we would have had a choice, hearts or spades. And whenever you have a choice of four card suits, it's usually right, well, pretty much always right, to bid the cheaper of four card suits to give your partnership the room to express what the opener has and therefore whether you have a fit, etc. So ignoring East bid, we would have been bidding one heart. That means if partner had four hearts, they would have supported, and if they had four spades, they would bid one spade. It just works. So when you have a choice of four card suits, you usually bid the cheaper of the four card suits as a responder. Um, in this scenario though, something's changed, and that is that East has bid hearts, 
So we don't want to bid hearts anymore because the opponents have hearts. We would like to now only bid spades because we only really have one shot of a major fit now and that is in the spade suit. So you could argue, all right, well, I'll just bid one spade over one heart. But if you are playing negative doubles, which I recommend, what negative doubles say is that a double by the responder shows the major suit that has not been bid, the unbid major. So in this scenario, a double, a negative double, would show spades, but also one spade would show spades. So you have two bids to show spades. That's if you're playing negative doubles. So what negative double players play in this scenario is that double shows four cards in spades, and bidding one spade shows five or more spades. It's very rare for you to need five cards to respond a suit as the responder in any system. Even in standard American system, you wouldn't need five cards to bid one spade over one club. But it's because this one heart bid has given us a new bid, which is double. We can now double to show spades, or we can bid one spade to show spades. So it makes sense to differentiate those two, and the way we differentiate them is double is four, bidding is five. So therefore, with this hand, the correct bid, if you're playing negative doubles, which I am, Double is the correct bid, which shows four cards in spades. I would have bid one spade over one club, but I'm now defining exactly how many spades I have. I have four exactly, because if I had five or more, I would have bid one spade over one heart. So four plus spades, six plus points, but in this scenario, it's actually four exactly spades and six plus points. Okay, so responding to an overcall, partner has got uh, five plus hearts, and they've got a decent-ish suit with you know, a smattering of points, probably six, seven, eight, upwards, that kind of region. Uh, but it's not really about the points, it's more about how much of a fit we have, how much we like our partner's suit, or dislike our partner's suit, etc. So, responding to an overcall, if your hand is not game interested, so that's less than an opening hand, which this is, um, you just bid the level of the fit. So, you add your partner's cards to your cards in their suit, and you get a quantity of trumps you guys will hold together. So, we expect our partners have five hearts or more, so we assume five. We have three cards in hearts, five plus three is eight, so we can bid two hearts, i.e. bidding for eight tricks. It's not about points, it's about the fact we have eight hearts together. If you take away the ace of hearts and made it a small heart, I'd still be bidding two hearts. Take away the king of diamonds, made it a small diamond, I'm still bidding two hearts. It's not about quantity of points, it's about quantity of trumps as the overcallers. So I would bid two hearts, looking to make North's rebid a bit more awkward. If I had more hearts, say I had a fourth heart, I'd be bidding three hearts because of the level of the fit. So two hearts is the correct bid here, because we have eight hearts together. Okay, so things have happened since we last opened the bidding. We were opening a club with our 4441, looking to show our 54 if necessary. However, the opponents have overcalled, and our partner has made a double, and assuming we remember that we're playing negative doubles, that double shows exactly four cards in spades. So we know there's a spade fit now, so we can just decide how many spades to bid i.e. quantity of spades, because we are supporting our partner's one spade bid. I know they haven't bid spades, but they have shown four cards in spades, so we're just supporting them. So if you like, we've sort of got away with our 4441 here, because we are supporting our partner, so it's completely irrelevant now how many clubs we have, really, because our partner has shown us spades, so we're agreeing spades. It doesn't really matter that we don't have the five clubs we should have, if you see what I mean. Um, so it's basically two spades, three spades, or four spades. That's what I'm thinking of. There's certainly no more than four spades on, because our partner hasn't opened the bidding, so slam certainly isn't on. So it's two, three, or four. So where do we sit in that kind of category? For me, we need to count our losers, because we're unbalanced. We've got an opening hand, we're unbalanced, and we've found a fit. So we've, we've kind of met the conditions for the losing trick count. So I would count the losers, and then have a think about how that affects our bid. So our losers are... Two in spades, missing the ace-queen, one in hearts, one in clubs, and two in diamonds. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a six-loser hand. Whenever you open the bidding, you're shown a seven-loser hand or better. So we have six losers, which means we are one better than our partner might think we are. So to boil that down, if we were minimum, if we just had seven losers, we would bid two spades. But because we have one loser better, therefore we can bid one more, we bid three spades. The minimum bid agreeing with your partner is a seven loser. Any fewer losers than that, and you can go higher and higher. So if we had a five loser, we would go straight to game. With a six loser, we invite with three spades, and so on and so forth. The key thing, really, is this singleton heart now has become very useful. It was irritating at the start, having a 4-4-4-1, but now we've found a fit, this singleton heart is going to be useful. 
So I think the correct bid is jump to three spades, let your partner decide whether to go for game based on whether they have eight losers to go with our six, or if they have nine losers or worse, and stay in three. So back to East, um, we wouldn't have bid any more hearts. I mean, given the three spade bid, we're certainly not bidding now, but we wouldn't have been willing to bid three hearts because the level of the fit has been reached. We've shown five cards, partner has shown three. We've reached our eight trick level, so we have no, we have no more to say, really. If we had six hearts, we might have bid three hearts, but we're certainly not bidding four hearts, certainly not at this vulnerability, and it's two beyond our level of fit, definitely not. So this is a clear cut pass. Okay, so now back to the negative doubler, and our partner has just passionately supported our spades. They could have bid two spades, and they bid three spades instead. Um, so our partner, as we know, did their bid based on the losing trick count. But because we have a balanced hand, we should actually go off our points rather than our losers, um, because a balanced hand is, is more accurate to go off your points, and an unbalanced hand is more accurate to go off your losers. So there is a bit of a hybrid going on here. One player is bidding on losers, the other player is bidding on points. But that does function. It does work the same. So how many points would we expect from that bidding? So first of all, if they bid one club, then two spades, they would be a minimum opening hand. Something like 11, 12, 13, 14, that kind of region. With a jump bid, they're probably somewhere nearer this kind of 15, 16, 17 region. If they had 18 or 19, they would have probably just gone for game. And if they had less than, say, 15, they would have probably just bid two spades. So they're in that middle bracket where they're kind of 16-ish, say. Um, bear in mind, we've shown six points. Um, if they had 18, 19, they'd have probably gone for it. And with 15 or less, they'd no interest. So they are in that middle. I'm not sure about game. Hence why they bid three and not two or four. So we need to reflect back. How good actually are we? We've shown six plus points. How many do we have? Well, we have seven. So that's not very good because... We have one point more than we promised, and our partner didn't want to go for game. So if we take them at face value of, say, 16 points, again, thinking of points because we're balanced, um, 16 plus 7 here is 23. It's not enough for game. We would need 9 or 10, really, to be going for game here. You want around 9 or 10 to accept a jump invite from the opening bidder, and we don't have that. We would need an extra king somewhere or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to decline this invitation by passing, and we're going to end up playing in three spits. Back to East for the lead, uh, leading against three spades, um, and I can see no reason not to lead a heart. I mean, we've got a sequence in hearts, we've bid hearts and agreed them. Bidding, leading anything else would be a complete guess, and I don't really fancy any of those three suits, if I'm honest. So I'd lead top of a sequence, king promising the queen, denying the ace. Okay, now we see the dummy. Okay, so looking at this contract, we're in three spades. Um, and we've got uh, a few losers to analyse. Usually you would look at the hand with longer trumps when you're looking at loser analysis, looking for trying to reduce your losers. In this particular hand, we have equal length of trumps. We've got four trumps in each hand, so we could set the dummy up, or we could set our own hand up. Either kind of works. So if we were looking at our own hand, our losers are a couple of clubs and a few diamonds, two or three, depending on what happens with the king, and also potentially a spade, because the queen's missing. If we're looking at the dummy... Um, we have no club losers, but we have heart losers instead. Um, and also the potential of the Queen of Spades and the King of Diamonds. So, basically, you could set either hand up here, because they're quite similar in shape, similar in trump length, etc. You could rough the hearts in hand, looking to set the dummy up. Or, you could rough the clubs in the dummy, looking to set our own hand up. Kind of doesn't really matter, as long as you commit to one. Um, now, interestingly here, we're going to have a bit of entry difficulty... Um, because our hands aren't particularly very strong. We have some entries here. We've got a couple of entries in clubs and one in diamonds. But entries to dummy are looking rather lackluster. Um, so for me, it feels like we're going to either rough clubs over there or rough hearts here. We can't really afford to draw many trumps, if any, because we need to rough either two clubs over there or three hearts over here. And then, of course, we've still got the concern of the king of diamonds and the queen of spades. So this contract is going to be scrappy, to be honest. If we lose a couple of diamonds and a spade and a heart, that, that is kind of what we're aiming for here to make our nine tricks, then that probably will yield nine tricks. But of course, we, we need to be careful about drawing too many trumps. If we draw three rounds of trumps, we're not going to have enough clubs to rough on the dummy, etc, etc. So what I'm thinking we're going to need to do here is rough these two clubs in the dummy, and once we've done that, then look to draw the trumps. Um, alternatively, we could play it by roughing those three heart losers in hand, and ignore the club losers and set that hand up instead. That could equally work, 
but you're going to have difficulty getting the lead there enough times to rough enough hard. So that's why I'm opting for the set this hand up rather than set that hand up play. Now on this first trick, we're going to lose the heart lead, and then they're going to, if they continue hearts, they're going to force us to rough it. If they switch, we're going to win it, and we're going to look to rough clubs early on, and then we're going to look to try and draw the trumps after roughing sufficient clubs. So for now, we're playing the five of hearts and see what the defence do next. So West plays low heart, letting their partner's king of hearts win the trick, and we have to follow suit with the seven. So that's the first trick lost. We were always going to lose that heart, of course. And now, depends what East does next. They could continue a heart. Now they actually know from the bidding that we're going to trump this heart, so they might not. Similarly, they might just continue hard because they don't really know what else to do. They don't really want to switch to a club or a diamond. That looks potentially risky. And they certainly don't want to switch to trumps with the queen. So, uh, yeah, I probably would continue a heart. We know our partner has the ace here because we know that Declare would have played the ace if they had it. So we can play a low heart. So that's probably what I do. I know that it's going to get trumped, but kind of nothing else to do here. Everything else looks a bit risky. So play a low heart. They play the ace. And we now trump it. We kind of have to trump it because otherwise we'd be we'd be losing the trick unnecessarily. So we win that we win that trick. And now it's time to kind of go for our plan, which was ace king of clubs, trump a club on the dummy, come back to hand, trump another club, and then draw the trumps. It's going to be a little bit more awkward because they've made us rough, so we're running out of trumps in this hand, and we're sort of approaching a cross rough scenario now where we play ace king clubs, trump a club, trump a heart, trump a club, trump a heart kind of thing. That is a possible alternative play, um, and it might be one I settle on, given that they've played hearts and made me rough here. That's not a particularly comfortable position we're in, but the alternative is to play the ace king of clubs, rough a club, come to, come to hand with the ace of diamonds, and then we're going to have to draw trumps with only three left, and if the trumps break badly, we might lose control, etc., etc. So, given that they forced me to rough in hand with a heart, I might now go for the cross rough kind of line. We do need the clubs to break nicely for this to work. We know the hearts are 5-3, so they're going to break okay. We need the clubs to be something like 4-3, 5-2 if the 2 is here. Sorry, if the 2 is on our left rather than our right, but 4-3 would be ideal. We have to rough these clubs, though. Whatever line we're going for, we've got to rough these clubs. So, I'd start with the ace of clubs and the king of clubs, taking two rounds of clubs. And again, we need these clubs to break. If one of these gets rough, we're in big trouble, basically. And everybody plays a club. So that's now eight clubs gone. And we now need to rough a club on the table. So we play a low club. The queen appears. So we rough it low. This gets over roughed. They broke 5-2. We're in trouble. And this doesn't get over roughed. Everyone has a club. So that's now two rounds of four and a round of three in clubs, so that's 11. This is the 12th club. Someone still has the jack. So that means that we do need to rough that other club. Again, it was a club loser. That's what we analysed right at the start. So now we need to get the lead back to hand. Two ways to do this. Low diamond to the ace, rough the club, then look to draw the trumps. Or rough the heart, rough the club, rough the heart, draw the trumps. Two options. The cross rough route is a little bit better because we're now running out of trump control already. We've only got three in each hand. So if the trumps are breaking badly, we're never going to be able to draw the trumps anyway. So I'd actually go for the cross rough route now, which wasn't really an option at the start, but now they forced us to rough hearts. We kind of sort of got to do that. So I would rough this. Oh, sorry, with the leaders in the table because we just roughed a club. So I would rough a heart back to hand. As so. We know we can't be over rough there because they both bid hearts with the five cards on our left. And now rough this club. There is a possibility that the jack of clubs is played here and we need to decide how high to rough because we know that they have no clubs left on our right. As it happens, it's our left-hand opponent who has run out of clubs. So they can rough, but rough before us. So in doing so, we can always over-rough them. So it's actually quite nice for us that the clubs are four on our right, three on our left, because that means they rough, have to rough before the dummy. They would probably just discard a heart rather than giving up on this queen to three trump scenario. So we can rough low knowing that the jack of clubs is on our right. The cross rough is going rather smoothly here. Okay and now we're in a position where we could draw the trumps by playing ace king. We're going to win ace king of spades, ace of diamonds and probably give in on the last three which is fine because we'll make our nine tricks but why not be greedy? Why not try to make our extra trick by making a, an extra spade separately 
and then making the ace king of spades independently try and rough that final heart basically kind of carrying on with the cross rough routine so to speak so play this heart again we know from the bidding that there are long hearts on our left so we can't be over roughed on our left they can rough on our right but they can't rough high enough because we can always over rough with the king should they rough with the ten or the queen as it happens they can only rough low, so they would probably just discard a diamond. If they did rough, we just over rough, so it doesn't really make a difference. And we can rough low, as so, like that, and they have to play their last heart. Things are going very swimmingly, it's fair to say. I've had very good fortune here, the clubs being four and three in the correct order, the hearts breaking in the way they did, which we knew from the bidding, etc. Now we've run out of things to rough. Um, so it's kind of cash our winners, give up the rest, so to speak, scenario. So I would probably cash the king of spades as such. We've run out of trouble. We can't draw the trumps. We're just taking our winners here, really. Um, and they play a spade. So that king of spades wins. Play the ace of diamonds. Because there's nothing really else to be done in the diamonds. We don't want to let them rough it if we play a low diamond first, for example. Like so. And then our last shot, which is extremely unlikely to yield a trick, because we know that one opponent has at least two trumps left. Play a diamond. In fact, it's basically impossible. Cover with the queen. You never know, they might have ducked with the king for whatever reason. And they haven't. The king wins. So we lose that. And now we're in a position where we're going to make one, which is this one, and we're going to lose this one. They actually have two trumps left because we didn't draw the trumps, which means we're only ever going to make this one anyway. So we win one, and we lose one. Which means we've made 10 tricks in total. Now, that was through good fortune. It was the fact that they led a heart of the second round because they kind of had no alternative, which enabled the cross rough a little bit. And it was the fact that the clubs were breaking four and three in that orientation, and we could rough hearts here and clubs there. It all went very, very swimmingly. It wasn't guaranteed to go that way, so not upset we've missed game, but glad we maximised our tricks for 10 in total.